my channel. So a few of you commented on one of my recent videos about becoming a full-time freelancer and you were interested to know more tips about how that happened or how you guys could potentially become full-time freelancers yourself and just some extra information that might be helpful on that. So I thought I'd do this video. I think that's probably something that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I think I've finally got to the point where I feel like I can genuinely speak from knowledge on, on how I've become a freelance photographer and some tips that have really helped me along the way to, to becoming a full-time freelancer because it is really not an easy job. I remember being 15 or 16 years old thinking, oh yeah, I'll just become a freelancer when I leave school and do freelance photography and I thought it was really just as simple as that and unfortunately it is not. Uh, for any other freelance photographers out there, you'll know about the commitment and dedication that it takes to uh, run your own business and to basically be everything because you're not just a photographer, you're the accountant, you're the marketer, sometimes you're even your own solicitor or lawyer. It's a lot of effort that goes into to maintaining a business, a freelance business, and particularly as photographers, it's not easy to get your work out there and to really get yourself known these days in such a saturated market. But obviously it can be done with a lot of hard work and persistence. It's something that is definitely achievable and it's, it's a great feeling once you finally get to that level of becoming a freelancer and you know that you can support yourself and the decisions you've made have helped you get to where you are. So I'm going to start off on 10 tips today on how to become a freelance photographer, a full-time freelancer. And these are not exact steps that you'll definitely need to take, but they're definitely hints that I feel have helped me along the way. And I really hope that they help you guys too. So let's get straight into the video and I hope you guys enjoy. So I think the first tip of this is not really a tip in the general sense of how to become a freelancer full time, uh, but it's definitely something that will help you eventually uh, and help you fund your business initially. And the tip is to get a part-time job or a casual job, depending on, of course, on what situation you're in currently financially. But if you don't have a lot of money saved to initially invest into your business, it's a good way to help fund your business in the first place. And I really do know most photographers start off this way in their freelance businesses. Um, it's just something that unfortunately does need to be done most of the time. If you've got enough funds to help yourself along with your business initially, that's great. And I'm so happy for you because I have to say that I did not. And even when I was living at home, I still had part-time and casual jobs just to help me fund what I was doing in my own business. So obviously if it was investing in equipment, hiring studios, um, buying clothes for models uh, to do test shoots and that sort of thing, there was always something that needed to be invested in and I always needed money for something. So unfortunately, especially with fashion photography, it's quite difficult initially to make money from that. And I definitely found myself having to get a part-time or casual job just to help supplement my income. And it did help me initially. It helped me to invest in, in certain things that I needed. And I'm pretty glad that even though that I had those jobs over a course of six years or so, I'm very happy in the end that I did have them because without those jobs, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. So I think definitely it helped me along the way. And it's definitely a tip that I would recommend to any people that are starting out as freelancers. Tip number two is to think outside the box and develop different skills. So in my case, I tried to think of lots of different ways to make money as a freelancer that wasn't going to basically have me getting a full-time job and just pushing everything to the side. A lot of the time that can be if you have any other skills that you're already quite good at or you think you can develop on more, definitely do that because these days there's a lot of jobs that do tend to cross over in terms of uh, different types of freelance work. So maybe if you're good at video or if you're good at graphic design, there's a lot of jobs out there that kind of require a lot of those elements um, as well as photography. So it's definitely something to look into. In my case, I really focused on retouching and developing that as a skill because even now I do quite a bit of retouching as freelance work and that does provide quite a bit of my income right now. So I think it's something that I still very much enjoy doing and I think is very much a part of my career. And I really do think that if there's any other skills that you guys might have that you can develop on, always find time to do that because that can be the factor of whether you do become a freelance photographer potentially earlier than you might already um, have hoped to. So I definitely think any extra skills that you have, definitely focus on that. There's also a term that I'm going to, to put out there and it's called stretching your genre. So even though you might be a fashion photographer, say like me, and that's my genre of photography, 
you can kind of stretch it a bit to earn other types of freelance work under the photography umbrella. So if you're a fashion photographer, for example, you could potentially do portraiture work and that could be just headshots, actors headshots, that sort of thing, or it might be uh, family photos or even weddings if that's what you feel comfortable with doing. And even just stretch it into those areas just to make a little bit of extra money and to really supplement your income once again. And if you're able to do that, sometimes you may not need that extra casual part-time job initially. Maybe that's something you can do instead and trying to get into a few other genres just to help yourself along initially with income. The third tip I have is networking and making contacts. And this is such an important one. It really is a lot of the time who you know in the industry. And for me, it's something as simple as doing test shoots and networking with other makeup artists, hairstylists, stylists, models, agencies, it really helps to network with people, especially with fashion photography like I'm doing. There's been so many circumstances in the past where I've known someone and I've, or I've made a contact and then they've passed my name on to someone else and then I've gotten work from that. So that's such an important thing I think in this industry is to really network, make contacts. Even if you're afraid of meeting people like I was a long time ago, I was very afraid of making contacts and speaking to people even. I think the more you do it, the more confident you do become. And it's definitely something that can either make or break you as a photographer sometimes. I think knowing the right contacts is such an important thing. And doing test shoots, particularly with fashion photography, is a really, really important thing because you're constantly networking. You're constantly meeting new people and you're making friends. And the best thing is if they do pass your name onto someone, sometimes that can be the break your career might actually need. Tip number four is to explore sub-genres of your photography genre. So in my case with fashion photography, there's quite a few things that come under that umbrella, such as e-commerce work. So that can be a lot of website fashion photography. Um, that's pretty much a lot of the time, very simple shots in front of usually a white wall. And that's just showing off the clothing, particularly for online shopping and, and that sort of thing. So there's actually quite a bit of work in that around. And most brands, fashion brands will have their own e-commerce studios where they do that for online stores. So that's definitely the way of the future as well. So anything that you can get with online e-commerce work is such a good way to go. Even if that's like product photography, if you're more into that, or if, or even food photography, that sort of thing. There's so much going on online at the moment in terms of photography, there's, there's always work in those areas. So definitely look for that and look for subgenres within your own genre. A few other examples under fashion photography would be like editorial, although you don't always get paid for editorials, um, it's pretty rare that that actually happens. It's definitely a good way once again of making contacts. There's also a lot of commercial work out there for fashion photography and that's a lot of the time where most fashion photographers make their money from. And there's also model portfolios. So if there's any models out there that you know are just starting out and they need work for their portfolio, you can always offer to charge them for an hourly or a certain amount of time for a model portfolio session. And just basically taking very simple headshots and full body shots just to show off their features. And that's another really good way to generate an extra source of income. Tip number five is reaching out to certain brands with proposals. And this really does apply to a lot of different commercial photographers. So commercial photography obviously goes into lots of different genres um, such as fashion or product or food photography. There's lots of different subgenres out there for that. But what I would recommend is definitely looking for your category and honing in on different brands that may need a photographer for their website or for their next campaign or whatever it might be. So with fashion photography, even independent designers who may not have made a lot of contacts with different photographers yet, they're always good to reach out to and uh, even if you're just starting off with doing campaign work or commercial photography, uh, it's a good way to start off. So that way the fashion designer and yourself are both on the same level and you can kind of grow together. And that's a really good way of making contacts initially. Even sending out uh, proposals to different e-commerce studios is a really good one or proposals to just many different brands. And if you even send like 20 emails out saying that you're after freelance work, even if just one of those studios or one of those brands gets back to you and says, yeah, we do need someone, then you've really won and then you have an extra source of income. So that's definitely something I would recommend doing. And it's always something that you do need to push with as a freelancer. You're always needing to push for more contacts, more work. And that's a really great way to do it is just to send out proposals like that. Tip number six is to create different streams of revenue. And I think that this is probably one of the most important parts of becoming a freelancer. I think it's important not to rely on any one 
job or any particular client at, at any point. And that's because if something goes wrong, something happens and that work is suddenly unavailable, then it does become quite difficult for you and your finances. And it's a really horrible feeling to know that you've either lost a client or or the work isn't available anymore and then you've got nothing else to turn to. So I definitely recommend creating different streams of revenue. And for a few examples, uh, I'll give you in my circumstance, I do obviously photography and then I also do retouching quite a bit. I do a lot of different types of retouching um, as I've tried to develop that skill over the years as much as possible as kind of almost a, a backup but something to complement what I'm already doing as well. I also sell Photoshop presets as well and I have affiliate links and I also do some brand sponsorships because that's something that's becoming more and more popular as uh, influencers take over the social media market and photographers become more influential in that sense. That's something else that you can work towards as far as developing your business and your own brand. Tip number seven is, I think, a pretty obvious tip, but it is to create a social media and online presence. And I think without that these days, as a freelancer, you will probably struggle. Uh, it is such an important thing to get out there, to get your work on the internet, online, so people can see what you're up to, so people can view your work and potentially hire you, because that's how most people find photographers these days, is through online or through networking. And online is such an important thing at the moment because of social media. And trying to be across all the social media sites at the moment is very difficult. I understand that. Uh, I go through that all the time. And trying to keep up with everything is almost impossible sometimes. But it's a really important task that I think most photographers would need to do these days. Particularly with Instagram because it's such a visual platform and people can scroll through your photographs and like and comment and engage. Brands can take notice of you as well and potentially with commercial photography it's a really important tool to have. Tip number eight is to visit different online sites such as freelancer.com, upwork.com and my personal favorite, The Right Fit, which as far as I'm aware is an Australian website so I'm not sure how that works for overseas uh, but you can take a look at it and see the general vibe of the website that I'm talking about. But freelancer.com and Upwork, uh, for example, you can go on and create a profile as a freelancer and you can be hired to do work on there. So that's great for any extra work that you might be able to pick up and a really good way to push for work, not necessarily locally, but for overseas as well. And trying to make different contacts in different countries is always such a great way to go. And definitely along with the online presence, that's some of the ways that you can do it. And look for those websites because they seem to be popping up more and more these days and more people want to connect brands with freelancers so it's a really great way to go if you're wanting that extra money. Tip number nine is to look for more consistent work over one-off jobs and of course there's going to be one-off jobs that will be great for you, they'll be well paying um, and they'll be wonderful for your business and you should always take those but in terms of looking for consistency that's something that's really important as well. So different uh, genres will offer more consistency than others Fashion photography is a hard one because a lot of the time they don't offer a lot of consistency with work. And <laughs> that's where it becomes very hard when you just want to do a commercial shoot every day of the week and get paid for it and you can't. Um, so I think it's always good to look for consistency with any work that you do get and clients that could potentially be recurring. With fashion photography, I do like to focus at the moment on e-commerce because e-commerce is a little bit more consistent. There's always work that's going up online as far as retouching and photography. So there's lots of different avenues that I could go into there with e-commerce and that's hopefully going to give me a bit more consistency rather than just going to one certain brand and doing one campaign shoot and not getting something for the next 10 months potentially. Um, I think that's really important to look at as a freelancer is to look for a bit of consistency even though it's not always easy to find uh, there are things you can do to make your income a little bit more consistent and tip number 10 is to take as much work as you can that's also a pretty obvious uh, tip I think but sometimes to some people it might not be um, you might be swamped with work you might have worked six days in a row and you just don't want to take on another job and that's totally fine I think mentally everyone needs a break and I'm not saying you should just overload yourself with work consistently and um, never take a break because that's not what it's about at all uh, but I do think as far as taking on as much work as you can it's really important because when that time comes uh, that the work potentially drops off or it becomes less consistent 
that's when you tend to struggle a little bit more and there might be times as a freelancer where you have six months full of work and then the next six months have nothing and there's definitely times throughout the year where things can slow down um, and you may not be getting as much work so it's really important to think ahead for the future as a freelancer and, and within your business and realize that even if you're really tired at the moment and you've done six days in a row it's a good thing because maybe a few weeks down the track you might not have anything and that's how I try and think to myself a lot of the time. I think everyone mentally definitely needs a break and it's important to not stress yourself out to the point where it's so overwhelming and you're feeling sick or you're feeling anxious. That's, that's definitely not a good thing. But remember to take on the work while you can. And a few weeks down the track, you might have that break that you need. So um, it's just important to keep in mind and thinking ahead for the future in that sense. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope these tips have helped you in terms of becoming a freelancer. Leave some comments in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to try and answer them the best that I can. Um, I always love talking to like-minded people about this subject because it's such a hard thing and I feel like everyone's in the same boat when it comes to freelancing. It's such a hard thing to do and, and a lot of people romanticize freelancing to the point where it's like this amazing lifestyle, which it can be, but at the same time it's a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and you have to be so ruthless with certain things, especially financially and, and so strict. So. Um, there's a lot that goes into being a freelancer. It's definitely worth it in the end if it's what you want to do, but um, just remembering that it takes a lot of effort is, is definitely something that's important too. And if you guys do have questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. And if you guys want to see what I'm up to recently, you can check out my Instagram. The links are in the description box below to the 52 week project group as well that I have on Facebook right now. So you guys can see what everyone's been up to in that group. And it's really interesting to see everyone's amazing work each week. So go check it out. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.